Hey, welcome back to Jeff Kanaga live here at Citizen Television. The future, that's what you're looking at, the future of Kenya right here. These young men and women in their 20s are the future. They're all student leaders in their own respective universities and campuses. And they're talking about the, this country. They're so bold. I love their openness. It's fantastic. Marco, let me, oh, well, here's some, there's a lot of feedback coming through. Huh? Let me just read a bit of what Moshimiwa Kimani Ishungwa you guys know him very well, I'm sure you do. It says, tell the young leaders they have the nation's future in their hands to believe in themselves, be focused on servant leadership, and not pick up bad manners of their current leaders. I wouldn't mention who he mentioned, but you get the, you get the picture. A lot of people are saying they, like Marco, you know, uh, the people have a lot of faith in you and they feel let down, let's say, let's be honest, by our generation. Is that, could you say, or have we let you guys down? Uh, what I can say, Jeff, is uh, you guys should, uh, as the previous generation, you should play a big role in role modeling us. And uh, you see, even as a father, what you do, the child copies one by one, one by one. And uh, if you're not able to uh, empower the youth right now, and uh, so they can be able to achieve sustain sustain sustainability, it's going to be an issue. Because, uh, Jeff, an example is uh, right now, uh, two days ago, there was this, uh, there's a, the first mobile barber shop in East Africa. A Kenyan. Mm. A Kenyan. Yeah. In East Africa. So what I can say is that we are not short of ideas. We should be able to be empowered, Jeff. Jeff, right now, South Africa is a, is a manufacturing cars. Why not Kenya so I can also have money in my pocket to buy a car? Because when, if they are manufactured locally, they're going to be cheaper. Jeff, I should be able to have a car like yours. I should be able to drive that G-Wagon. And people don't call me a thief. It's taken me thirty years. You can't, you can't drive it today or and, tomorrow. And that's why I'm it's telling you. That is why I'm telling you, Jeff. We need to change the narrative. We need to empower the youth, so that if I am able to drive that car, people don't call me a thief. Yes. And uh, the Bible is quite uh, categorical about leadership. Look at David in the Bible. He was young. Uh, look at Jesus when he was in the temple, talking to the old people, and he was lecturing the old people. Someone like Anthony Manyara can be lecturing the Muradis, the Atwolis, the Mudamas of this nation right now. So, Jeff, uh, basically, the youth should be empowered. Absolutely. Good point. Good point. Uh, Ikram, uh, have we let you down? I, 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 and you, you've been very honest all evening, so you might as well stay honest and continue. Have we let you down? Yes, you have. Uh, let's take an example of the Kenyan Imimi that was launched by... CAS Nadia. You know, <laughs> it is really fun. It was Kenya Nimimi on stage, the president dancing to war. Then after that, what next? I don't see any youth in anything. A, like, a, like appointing a, a auditor general, a 70, oh, I'm really sorry, a 70 year old lady. While we have brilliant minds here in Kenya, youths. Huh? Going for, like, you see, let's take an example of United States of America, inauguration of Biden. The lady, Amanda, the poet, in Kenya, if they do such a thing, <laughs> they'll bring artists yeah. that are very old, or like they're depicting pictures that us youths don't have any potential. They're squashing our dreams. I mean, you just feel excluded, right? You feel left out of the equation. In everything. Yeah. In county levels, the same thing. Like, in everything, not even politically. You, there's this thing that KCC students, the just concluded KCC students, some companies are looking for them to employ, to give them internship for two months before they join a university. Hey, that is so funny. While we have unemployed graduate students, amounting to 70% of those people who have just graduated, and why, are you, why do you want to employ someone who does not have the skill, someone who has not gone through higher level of learning? There's something wrong with, there's a disconnect <coughs> somewhere. See, uh, we went wrong somewhere. Uh, let me say, God, the gods are revisiting us. They'll revisit you guys, the old, of not giving us youths a chance. Guy, Joki, 
Uh, do you follow up with that? <laughs> yes. We've let you guys down. Yeah, I, I believe that you guys really, you don't really, you, you look down upon us, to, to be honest. You'd be like, uh, they don't have, you, you feel like we don't have the skills, um, and the, all we, uh, you, you feel like we don't have the skills to, to run um, positions, and there are so many people who are actually very qualified, learned people, who can be able to take up these positions. So you, as, as they said, uh, you guys have let us down. Yeah, we have. Uh, Anthony, I don't need to ask you this question. I know the answer. But uh, let me ask you a question that a lot of people are asking, okay? Uh, Steve Biko, Afula, and many people are asking the same thing. Ask each one of these young leaders, future leaders, today's leaders, how would you tackle corruption? Without going too deep into how would you tackle it that's being, dif that's different, being done differently today? <clears throat> Thank you so much, Jeff. First of all, you realize that corruption in this country, Jeff, has gone to bigger levels. When I talk about uh, corruption, remember, Jeff, more than 75% in this country, they are youths. And these youths, they, 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 they have various setbacks, especially to do with job opportunities. There is a lot of unemployment. There is a lot of unskilled labor. All these kind of problems that the youth face nowadays they are all interconnected with corruption. Jeff, last week I was in a meeting with the DCI, the DCI headquarters. There are a number of things we discussed. This country, for instance, you, just the other day we saw that two billion was being spent a day. Uh, I mean, was, was missing, went missing. Being wasted, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah go on. You ask this kind of money, where does it go? It goes to corruption. But when we tell them, like for instance, university students should be set up, should be added some funds so that they even don't pay, don't repay help loans, that money is, it isn't available. I think you're not answering my question. How would you tackle corruption? Simple now, question. Now, Jeff, as a student leaders, from my own uh, capacity, what I can just say about corruption is that it is something intrinsic within individuals. There's something which we as a country, we have to make a decision. Uh, we have a new uh, we, we have a new chief justice this chief justice is able now to steer the, the judiciary to the right direction we have seen so many cases Jeff of corruption in parastatos government agencies all these institutions and there is a massive corruption in them alright let me ask that question again Marco maybe you might answer it better for me would you jail people would you put people in front of firing squad, like people talk about, you know, what would you do? How would you tackle corruption? Uh, Jeff, I think uh, corruption is a very, very major issue in our country for so many years. And uh, even after the president empowering those agencies, the DPP, the DCI, and uh, which is uh, the DPP and the, the DCI, DCI. Yep. Uh, even after that, the war on corruption has been selective. And uh, we should be very, very careful on the direction we are going. Because uh, right now, if, uh, if uh, someone like uh, Anthony is corrupt, and someone like me is corrupt, we're both corrupt, but if we have different political affiliations, it's going to show. So first, all the leaders should accept that they're all corrupt. That is the first point all of them accepting. Then, after they accept, is now that we should agree as a nation and come together and deal with these people, like uh, various countries have, have done. Like, Ikram, you agree? All leaders are corrupt. They're all corrupt. All leaders, no. But, uh, Jeff, I think the best thing that we can do is being brutal and crude. Capital oh. punishment. Go on. Capital punishment. Capital Death. punishment. Death. Death. Having a division of prisons, maximum prisons, fraud stars to be jailed in maximum prison. Um, and also, like you see countries like Japan and Singapore, North Korea, they are doing what? Capital punishment. They are very brutal and crude. And cases of corruption, very minimal. Would that work here? Uh, Ikram, you think it would work here? Definitely, if we try. Yeah. You get rid of a couple of people and then everyone will fall in line. Yes, if you just dare to be corrupt, Eish. death is awaiting. This generation. Jockey, you agree? 
Yes. You agree? Uh, yes. Hey. Corruption, it's like it's become a norm. It's like everyone is like, uh, my business is not is not working. I, I need to find somewhere where I can steal money so that I can also benefit for me and my whole family. People are becoming very selfish in this. And uh, I think if we become more strict, and you know we we actually say that if you're actually found uh having looted uh money or anything or um uh ha having looted money or um what's the word stolen yes stolen just stolen yeah yeah you you actually face you actually face the fire you guys are not kidding, huh? You eh? actually face it because there's like no the firing other way. Squad. Yes, because there's no other way that people will actually be like, eh, eh you know that, you know, actually this person, I'll, he went to court, you know, he went to, he went to jail. You know, if I try to do that, I will also go there. You, you all, you, nobody wants to go to jail at the end of the day. Ikram, you're still killing people in your capital punishment. What uh, else do you want to add? Um, maybe having body comes to the police forces because they're the most corrupt unit. <laughs> can, you, can you afford it? If yes, then have it. And also, like, have a, an organization or people enforcement unit whereby the, they act as watchdog to the government mm -hmm. and private sectors. All great ideas. I don't know if they'll ever be implemented, folks. Let's go to the magic wall. Let's see what, what are the people saying out there. There he is. Soko Analyst says, kindly ask them, according to them, what solutions do they have in regards to creating jobs to tackling unemployment? Marco, creating jobs, tackling unemployment. Because uh, the youth, 70%, or they say the numbers are huge of unemployed youth. Go on. Uh, uh, unemployment uh, has been a very, very big issue, Jeff. And uh, this uh, comes to us as even the youth and as Kenyans, because uh, we find that uh, these uh, leaders and the political leaders, uh, when it comes to elections, they promise us jobs and they promise us uh, certain promises that they can't fulfill. So as, uh, as, 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 as the youth, that is why I was saying in the next election, we are going to be looking at what you bring to the table and what you're going to do and if you're able to implement it. And another thing, uh, Jeff, is that people should be empowered, as I was saying, the youth. People are moving from that thinking of, uh, of being employed. People want to do their own businesses. So if people are able to be empowered to start their startups and their businesses are able to thrive, poverty will be lost and people will be employed in their own way. Because yeah. if I get an opportunity to, employ, to get a business, I'll employ people around me and to be there and to go around. Ikram, real quick, unemployment. Uh, unemployment, maybe we change our system of education from theory to more practical and technical. Maybe issues. that's why we had the 2662 or whatever it's called. Maybe that's why, you know, the... Uh, CBC. Yes. The, the CBC. based. Yes. If we changed our education system, like, let's take an example of Korea, North Korea, mm. Singapore. Mm. They are more, like, heavily on technology. And you see these people, even China, the ones that are inventing things or making those electronics, are very young people. Yeah. So if you want employment, we first change our system of education. Second, like we have the big four agenda where they are implementing the medium term plan of the vision 2030. So far so good. Out of the four agenda, which one, Jeff, to be honest, is likely to go for it. Not even is likely <coughs> to go for it out of the four. Now we are just having uh, elephant uh, plants, but we're not going. The government is failing people. Mm. The person who has asked that question on employment, he or she should ask the government, what have they done to people? Not only like the white collar jobs, the blue collar jobs, incentives. Uh, in BBI, there is this issue of tax holiday, the seven year tax holiday to companies. What about having us SME going for almost like that years, paying some, giving out some incentives to those SMEs? Good points, good points. There's a lot of questions and theories and, and comments. Let me just go through them. Okello Mwalimu says, the promising student leaders, that's all of you, must put their political careers ahead of love for money. They must avoid being misused by political heavyweights as mercenaries. Lastly, they must learn to be cautiously ambitious. All right. 
good advice, good advice. Fabian Fibanda, actually. So, so my question is, why is it that most student leaders hide under the shadows of prominent leaders in terms of sponsoring their campaigns? I asked you that question, Anthony, earlier on. Why do you, most student leaders hide under? Are you hiding under anyone? No, Jeff. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Ian, it, oh, yeah. Ian says, Jeff, could you ask the young leaders to share their thoughts on these issues? BBI process, as initiated by the President and former Prime Minister. B, High Court ruling on BBI process. C, huge debt and continuous borrowing by the government. Okay, real quick, thoughts on BBI. Jockey, real quick, your thoughts? What did you think of the BBI and how it was, uh, how it was shot down in the High Court? Uh, I believe the High Court had, um, uh, I, they were very sober when they were making the decision on behalf of on behalf of all Kenyans, and um, they 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 actually gave a very detailed explanation as to why the BBI couldn't the BBI couldn't go go through. For yeah. example, the IBC didn't conduct a mass voter registration. Uh, so many students, so many people have uh, have have gotten IDs from the last general election. So many people are eligible for voting. I personally wasn't eligible for voting that that time, but I am right now. So IBC should. You've been excluded from this. Exactly. Oh, okay. Exactly. Okay, Anthony, you real quick, your thoughts on BBI? First of all, Jeff, as a personal opinion, I am supporting BBI. That's for the record. I'm supporting BBI simply because. As chairman when I was University of Nairobi president and also the KUSO chairman in, back in 2019, 2018, sorry, I was the person who was approached by the task force to give recommendations on behalf of students nationally. And most of these recommendations which have amounted, which have, which have become part and parcel of this BBI document were our recommendations as students. Okay, so what do you think what the High Court did? Do you agree with that? I mean, do you think it'll still, uh, it'll not Jeff, go through? Jeff, respectfully, because we respect the judiciary, we may not respect the judgment, but we respect the, them as the judiciary. So I can say, as a personal opinion, I don't respect, I mean, I don't, I think the, the judgment was, uh, was not right. Okay. And uh, as students, or rather me as a chairman, what I would just say is that we are not likely to go as per that judgment. They, we, are, we are hoping for the appeal to come out positive. At least we continue this process. Because okay. Ikram, we'll let you. Ikram? Uh, because what? the matter is actively in the court, mm -hmm. I'll not delve into it. But did you so like much. the idea of BBI? Did you like the idea? Uh, you see, Jeff, in many democracies that we celebrate, there are several constitutional amendments. If it does not hurt Wanjiku, if it does not kill democracy, why not? Good point. Marco? Uh, the Building Bridges Initiative, I can speak on the position as a youth. Uh, the tax holiday of seven years, then there is the grace period of the help, and uh, finally there is going to be the Biashara Fund, where every word is going to have some money. But uh, on the ruling of the court, in a specific, let's, uh, as Kenyans, let us respect the court. And even uh, the retired, the, the, the right honorable Raila Omulu Odinga said, even as a country and as Kenyans, even though we are not happy with the decision, let us respect the decision. Some of these things in BBA, uh, for example, uh, uh, concerning the youths, uh, these are things that, uh, because right now, Jeff, what I can tell you is the BBI is in the ICU. So these certain proposals, whether BBI is there or not, I think we should still find a way, a way that we are going to implement this certain, uh, th th those proposals. And uh, this reggae, the question is not whether reggae or jazz or genge tone, whether it has stopped or where it, or where it hasn't stopped. The question is what we need to do as a country and we need to look at the future of Kenyans. With or without BBI, Kenya has to move in a certain way. Absolutely. You said it's an ICU. Can it still be revived? There's a chance? Someone in this ICU can still be revived, but my, my thinking and what I'm going to emphasize is with or without BBI, those proposals need to find some way and, to get and Kenya will move on. Yeah. And Kenya will move on. Good point. Alfin Samurai, okay, Alfin Samurai. Suicidal cases on the rise, drug abuse, gambling, early pregnancy, and immorality in most universities are common concerns. Jeff asked the leaders what they are doing to address such issues. Well, there's a lot of issues there, a lot of issues. Anthony, real quick, 
drug abuse, gambling, early, all that? Jeff, after this COVID-19 pandemic, very many youths have been affected by mental issues. And Jeff, it's a big issue uh, amongst students, especially. We can just say that Jeff, suicide cases have gone up. That is one of the issues that we were discussing the other day with the DCI to see how we can be able to reduce the numbers. Jeff, that is not the only concern which has affected uh, students, especially in this pandemic. We have seen also the issues to do with help. Uh, students are, st are starving. Mm -hmm. Jeff, the other day you saw it's students. It's a question here, actually, yeah, yeah about students st the other starving. Day, Jeff, I was on record saying that students are, are, are feeding rat meat. Other students, uh, Jeff, they are feeding on KDF and we call it a day. So we have had very serious concerns regarding help. And uh, Jeff, as we speak, more than two billion was deducted from the money that is allocated to students as help. Now, even as we speak right now, the students who are supposed to benefit by, I mean, uh, are supposed to benefit from help, they are around, around 397,000, but currently, the numbers have drastically reduced. And as a chairman, the issues that we have come, uh, the, the issues that we have agreed with the steering committee is that we are going to fight to ensure that these students still have help immediately they get into school. Okay. Uh, uh, Max is asking, please ask these great young leaders, what's their take on how universities are ran? I, 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 Ikram, maybe you can answer this. How do you bridge the gap between university administrations and students facing them like hunger and what is investment, school fees, accommodation? Uh, how, please ask the, what yeah, is their the, take the, on the, how universities are ran? Mm. Yes. Uh, I'll talk of my university, Kenyatta University. The Kenyatta University administration is really in touch with the students. We have almost 110 student congress persons representing various schools and various hostels that each report to officers, the university's officers. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, we usually have some kamkunji, like once in a month in every school, where students come and talk of their issues and that the, the deans and department chairmen address it with them. Mm. Is that the same as Jake, uh, Jake Uat, uh, Joki? Yes. Same? Yes. Administration? Yeah. You guys get along? Yeah. Uh, the, the, uh, before, people never used to get along with, uh, with the, the students never used to get along with the administration. Yeah. But um, these days that we, we actually, we sat down and we actually agreed that we'd talk to them first before, you know, resulting to uh, harsher methods to implement things like going to the streets mm -hmm. and, you know, breaking things throughout the school. Yeah. yeah. The same thing, Marco, Daystar? Yeah. And uh, actually in Daystar University, I can say that uh, the relationship between uh, the administration and the student leaders is a good relationship mm -hmm. and me being at the, the cornerstone. And uh, what I usually ensure is that there is fairness, that I will never go uh, to the administration and while I'm advocating for the needs of the students or vice versa, that I, en I ensure that there is fa there's fairness. And yeah. uh, that's what I like about my university because as this happens, I'm able to advocate for problems faster because you see when there's tension between the student leaders and the administration, people are not able to work together because there's no, there's no good working relationship. Mm. And in this university, we have a good working relationship with the oh, administration. Absolutely. K. Abraham, number nine, says, great conversation there. Thumbs up for them. Ask them, how do they see Kenya in the next 10 years? Okay, before you answer that question, Kabando or Kabando? <laughs> Kabando or Kabando? He's just messaged me. Himself. Yeah, himself. He says, thanks for the mention of Santa Zana. <laughs> With all the student leaders, all the very best, very eloquent, very focused, very impressive. Uh, the Kosu guy, well, careful not to be a proxy for the powers. Some advice to you, Anthony. Um, so, all, yeah. All right. So, next ten years, guys, where do you see this country? Okay, you guys are 22, 22, 26, 22. You, you're all young, anyway. Next ten years. Let's say twenty years. Let's start with the ladies first, okay? Ikram, you first. Where do you see Kenya in the next ten, twenty years? I see Kenya being one of the developed countries in Africa. I see Kenya that is promising to eat, uh, her children. I see a peaceful Kenya. I see togetherness. I see a change of environment. 
that is Kenya for me. And you're going to be right there in the forefront. You're going to be there. Inshallah. You're going to be like, Inshallah. You're going to be like 42, 45 there. Good Lord. <laughs> Joki. Yes. Kenya, next 10, 20 years. Um, next 10, 20 years, uh, we're hoping for, uh, uh, we're, we're, we're going to see uh, more of us youth leaders who, that time we shall be in power. And you see right now we already woke. Uh, we know that we're not just electing leaders because they are popular, but because we want to see that they have actually implemented what, that, what they have said. So I believe that we'll be in a better place. Uh, our, our education system will be, will be far, far much better than it is right now. Um, there won't be so many issues of corruption. We'll have found better ways to cope and deal with such issues. Yeah. Even tribalism, that uh, such issues, I don't think by then they'll be really um, a big issue as they are right now. Anthony, a kid who is six years old now will be your age in 20 years. Yeah. They'll be 26. Yeah. You'll be 46. Yeah. Where do you see, where do you see this one? <clears throat> Jeff, I'll be 75. I'll be 75. Yeah. Okay, carry on. Yeah, Jeff, if you look at the Sustainable Development Goals, United Nations SDGs, and then you look at African, I mean African Union Agenda 2063, and then you look at Vision 2030 here in Kenya, and then you look at the various uh, initiatives which have been initiated by the government. Look at the these roads which have been constructed, uh, the bypass. Uh, you, you look at all these various projects which have uh, been initiated by these governments. Even the affordable housing projects, uh, specifically that is my area because I'm an architect. Jeff, I'm seeing uh, 10 years from now, whereby Kenya is placed enough to, you know, aid poverty, uh, look for solutions which can aid poverty. I'm seeing a Kenya whereby education is elevated. I'm seeing a Kenya whereby there is generally sustainability whereby people can be able to live harmoniously, there is peace. And even in spite, I mean, uh, looking at the BBI uh, process, which already my friend said is in the ICU, I'm hoping probably they can, you know, Resuscit revamp it. <laughs> yes. yeah? Yeah. They can rejuvenate it, and then yeah. it can come back again into life. Uh, remember we said that reggae is still on. So Jeff, I'm seeing a scenario whereby if these objectives, good objectives which are enshrined in these, in these uh, documents, can be able to be adopted in a good manner by good people. Jeff, this country will be very far yeah. in terms of peace, all these kind of good uh, right. initiatives. Marco, you get the last word. Uh, yeah, uh, especially if we continue the Big Four agenda. And uh, what I can also say is uh, in conjunction with that and us, at that time, uh, in 20 years, we're going to be the leaders. And uh, right now, how you can empower us is uh, there's a famous Chinese proverb that says, give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. The youths coming this election, they don't want handouts. They want to be empowered in such a way that they're able to stand together as the youth you know, we are visionary leaders. And uh, even the Bible says it in Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. And a leader without a vision is like the kite without wind, no direction. So hopefully I can tell you there are gonna be greener pastures in the next 20 years, next 10 years, because these are the faces you're gonna be seeing in leadership. And we're gonna take the mantle and take Kenya to the next level. Yeah. And God help us, of course. Absolutely, I like that, I like that. Marco Laboso, thank you very much. Ikram Amina, great job. Okay. Anthony Manyara, fantastic. Joki Karioki, well done. Okay. Someone once told me, the future is so bright, it blinds my eyes. That's what I see when I yeah, look at you yeah. guys. Thank you. Thank Jeff. Let's just see. Yeah. You, you're, what, you're a politician, you're not? <laughs> you're not asked about our ambitions. No, I know you, you can tell the ambitions. <laughs> Listen to what uh, Kabando Akabando just told you. Don't be blinded by politicians. <laughs> <laughs> You're smiling. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you, guys. We'll keep talking. All yeah. right. Yeah. I think this is a great forum, and um, you know, I think we should have more of you more often. Sure, Jeff. After all, you are the future, right? Yeah. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank yeah. you for having us. Thank you for yeah. this. Thank you all. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And thank you for watching. And keep my goodness, the tweets, the messages, so thick and so fast. But don't forget. It's Wednesday. It's all about those three letters on the keyboard that follow each other. J, 